Researchers at MIT have developed a new tool that could help detect breast cancer in people who are considered high risk. It is a wearable ultrasound device that sits in the cups of bras. The device picks up early changes in breast tissue, ultimately giving patients a higher survival rate. Janine Dadervin joins us now. She's an associate professor at MIT and was a lead researcher who helped create the device. Janine, so tell us how this device works, first of all. Thank you so much for having me. So the device is, as you described beautifully, it's a wearable device which can create ultrasound waves which are perfectly non-harmful. And these waves can travel the tissue, which is in this case the breast tissue. And while traveling the, through the tissue, whenever it, the, the wave can see an obstacle such as cyst or tumor, the wave can reflect back and the technology can capture this signal and creates a white and black image, which we can easily identify the coordination of the tumor and the depth of the tumor, which is extremely important when it comes to the interval cancer. Because um, unfortunately, every eight women, one will be diagnosed with breast cancer during their lifespan. And almost half of these women are diagnosed in the later stages and the survival rate decreases till 22%. So with this technology, with profound resolution and frequent screening almost every single day at home with no operator dependency or any cold gel in between your soft tissue and the ultrasound technology that we offer, you can increase the survival rate up to 98% and also decrease the spending for the cancer research and cancer imaging, breast cancer imaging. I, hearing the statistics are remarkable. and and. Any woman who has ever had to have a mammogram knows that it is not a particularly pleasant experience. And in fact, that is one of the difficulties in getting women screened um, and, and leads to some of those higher rates of, of breast cancer and the delay in, in screening. So who benefits most from this device? And could you see it actually replacing mammograms? So this device is particularly designed for high-risk women um, who goes through um, frequent breast screening. And the mammography is the current standard way of screening the breast tissue. However, um, we can only get mammography every other two years because risk over benefit is quite high due to the radiation uh, that comes from the mammography. And by the time you have your second mammography, as the first one is being clear, um, half, of, half of this high-risk woman already develop a cancer in between two scans, which is called interval cancer. And um, as well as this technology is very painful, they smash very personal part of you. But the technology that we provide for this high-risk woman, um, they will first of all have a peace of mind. And when they see a, an anomaly or a question mark in the image that they receive, then they will go and the mammography. So we are sort of decreasing the need of the mammography as well as enhancing um, the patient uh, comfort and um, uh, user-friendly interface uh, for any high-risk woman. But eventually, we hope this device could be helpful for any woman and even male Peop, uh, male patients because the technology is such malleable, stretchable, and flexible. So it can take the shape of any curvilinear parts of your tissue. It can be very curvy for like women or very planar for male colleagues. So it will be actually very beneficial for, for, for globally for many people. Based on our humble calculation, this technology has the potential to save 12 million lives per year globally. This has the potential to save 12 million lives. As you say, our humble calculations, how far away are we from actually seeing this being implemented widespread? It's, it's, it's my dream, and we are on our way to launch the company the end of this year and early next year. And we are on our way to try this device on hundreds of women to get the FDA approval. And we are also very much uh, looking forward uh, to find and work with investors and partners who can take this technology and translate to the next level. So with best estimation, and I hope it is going to happen, and I'm sure we will talk again, in four to five years, we will make this technology to be ready for use. Professor Janen Dadervin, 
Thank you very much, not only for joining us, but for continuing to work in this, uh, in this field that is so very important. Thank you.